amazing at everything, but... What's up guys, I'm here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. To my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. Today we're going to be talking about the Ryzen 3900X, my first video in a line of videos. I've got gaming benchmarks coming out, another one, and a bunch of other things. Like this is the B450 test, I'm going to be switching it to an X570 uh, chipset. There's a bunch of things coming down the road, but we're going to keep this video quick and dirty, just the way you like it. And I want to talk specifically about voltages and why undervolting this thing may be the best idea if you want to increase its longevity, given some of the weird voltages and overclocking issues that I ran into when doing my test. So we're gonna start this video by talking about hardware unbox. So, so supposedly they borked a 3900X by simply increasing the load line calibration on the CPU and leaving everything else at auto, which essentially fed it too much voltage and killed it. Now that might not necessarily be the exactly what happened. I've been looking for more information. So if somebody has that, please link it down in the comments. I don't wanna be spreading misinformation in any way. But that being said, it made me more hesitant to use the CPU, especially when I got into the BIOS. So this thing was being fed 1.48 volts on auto, which is nuts, and I immediately panicked. But then I did a little bit of sleuthing and I found that well, the Ryzen 3900X has a safe maximum voltage across all cores of 1.325 volts for you overclockers in case you wanted to know. And then on a single core, 1.47 volts supposedly from AMD. So that is a pretty high voltage, but that's at a lower idle. It's not across everything, especially not under full load. And that core changes with depending on the basically the boost technology that's going on in the CPU. So in doing my testing, what I found is that in Cinebench 20, I was getting a 491 on stock settings for the single core, which is tremendous. Multi-core was over 7,000, 7,068. And then that was just at stock. And then my 3D Mark score was easily over 13,000 at stock settings as well. This was my GPU at stock, which is the 2080 Ti Black, which is the worst 20, uh, 2080 Ti performer. And then with my RAM at 3,200, uh, cast latency 16 with 16, 16, 16, 38 timing. So basically that was just at stock settings, which is actually tremendous. So once I cranked it up, I was able to hit two different clocks, uh, basically 4.4 gigahertz at 1.4 volts, which is obviously over the safe recommendation, and then a stable 4.3 to 5, or 3250 at basically 1.325 volts, the maximum safe voltage they recommend for all of the cores. Now, I was fully expecting to get better performance in Cinebench synthetic tests, which I did. In my single core, I went up to 505 and 509 respectively. For my multi-core, I went up to about 7400 and 7600 in multi-core performance in Cinebench 20, which was tremendous. And then in 3D Mark, that's where things got a little bit interesting. I actually lost performance in both. I was kind of trying to figure this out and then I was just running my stock testing for my benchmarks for games and everything looked good but then when I overclocked I noticed that in specific titles things like GTA were single core single threaded performance matter most I was losing a little bit of FPS and then in titles where multi-core mattered more I was gaining a little bit of FPS not much maybe 5 or 10 on the ending given game so that's kind of where the performance delta was that I saw. And that was interesting. I, I tried to figure out why that was. So after spending many hours sleuthing around on the internet, I think I came up with basically why I was getting worse performance. And if you guys have more information on this, I would gladly love to hear it and open a discussion on this because I'm still kind of curious. So basically, as much as I've been able to gather, the core and uh, boost that's on the CPU, which obviously you can turn off in the BIOS, was pushing these cores as far as they could be, but I was only seeing maybe 4200 or 4300 max across any core at any given time, except for this single core booster, which was boosting, you know, one or two cores of back and forth between uh, like 4.6 or a little bit above 4.6. And even though, um, you know, Windows is really bad at assigning which core at any given time in the gaming, it's actually an issue that they need to iron out for better performance. What was happening was it didn't matter what chiplet that boosted core was on, any given time it was most likely being used. And so I was getting a higher single threaded performance boost. Yes, even if, although it was only on one or two cores, that made a big enough difference in those titles to retain some of the performance, which is why in 3D Mark, which obviously tastes, uh, basically tests things like FPS um, in addition to the rest of the scores, I was losing performance because my single thread was going down by as much as you know 450 megahertz on the single core overall. So even though, again, all the cores were running higher in all those tests, in actual real life applications in terms of gaming that rely more on single thread performance, I was losing a little FPS because I was losing that core boost. So now we're left with a kind of a conundrum because 
I don't like the amount of voltage that is just being manually fed to the CPU right now. To me, it's still way too high. And yes, I know the rest of them are bouncing between like 1.2 to 1.3 something at any given time. The fact that one of these cores under any given load is getting 1.7, 1.48, or not 1.7, 1.48, 1.47, I should say, makes me really nervous. So what I plan on doing is actually keeping my stable clock at 4.350, basically at 1.325 volts, because I wanna make sure that it's running as efficiently as it can at the safest voltage that I feel comfortable with. And to me, that allow, you know, allows me to be a little, a little, feel a little bit better about it. And I am gonna leave core boost and things like that on. And I noticed that, yes, it was drawing a little bit more, but I'm essentially reeling in the amount of voltage that is going out to these cores um, you know, at any given time. And I think on the long end, it's gonna help just kind of protect this thing because I'm worried that in, uh, there's gonna be a use case situation where too much voltage is gonna be fed to the CPU. I'm gonna bork it just like a hardware and box did because apparently it's not that hard. So you might wanna consider doing the same, which means you may lose a little bit of single core performance, a couple FPS in some games and multi-threaded tasks you're gonna pick up, obviously there in terms of like productivity, but if you care about your CPU, might be a smart idea to undervolt this and see how much performance you can push. And I'm gonna be interested to see if I can push it farther on my X570 chipset due to the way the power delivery works with that. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go and leave me a big thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, leave me a thumbs down. Remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you know when these new videos drop. As always, thanks to my Patreon and Twitch subscribers who guys the, the channel simply not possible without you your money helps directly support me you get access to uh, basically putting your name at the end of my videos and also getting access to these monthly wallpapers which I have new artists commission essentially every month so they're always unique pieces on top of that thanks to everyone who uses my Amazon affiliate link as that money also goes to supporting the channel as well think about joining our discord we've got a bunch of gamers and PC enthusiasts it's the empty clip discord this is all down in the description so check that out if you want to and you can DM me directly leave a comment on this I want to know more about why we're getting these weird performance variances but I think for me that's basically what's happening because when you manually overclock you're losing that single core boost um, you essentially you're disabling it for the most part for single thread so that's why and then you're not feeding it as much voltage as it wants and so it's going to kind of hammer your performance a little bit anyway guys I'm going to continue to make these videos whether you watch them or not but I hope you do and I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Geared Inc. Oh, I don't want to break you you're too expensive I mean, it, we're talking about 510 FPS, maybe max. That's not, I don't care. Gotta protect it. $500 isn't cheap, folks. Not for anybody.